Numerical Computation, Chapter 2, Video Number 6. In this video, we look at some theoretical aspect for polynomial interpolation, namely the existence and uniqueness of these polynomials. Before we get into that, um, we need to borrow a theorem from algebra, namely the fundamental theorem of algebra. You might remember this. Um, if not, we'll review it. So the theorem says the following. It's about polynomials. Okay, so every polynomial of degree n that is not identically zero has maximum n roots. So the way you count roots will be including the multiplicities. So if a root is a double root, then it's counted twice, and if it's a triple root, it's counted three times, and so on and so forth. And these roots may be real or complex. So as a consequence of this statement, we have the following. So this implies that if you have a polynomial of a degree n, and somehow you manage to find that it has more than n roots, then this polynomial must be identically zero. So think about this theorem. I hope it's clear to all of us. Now we are ready to state the theorem on the existence and uniqueness of interpolating polynomials. So the same data set, xi, yi, is given where xi's are distinct. And the theorem says that there exists one and only polynomial Pn of degree less than or equal to n, such that it interpolates the data. So what does it mean is Pn at xi equals to yi for i from 0, 1 all the way to n. So the theorem actually states two parts. One part is the existence. It says that to interpolate n plus 1 points by polynomials of degree n, you can always find some polynomials that will do that job. And then the second part is the uniqueness, and it says that there is only one such polynomial. So we need to prove both of them. Well, let's take a look at the existence. Shall we be worried about the existence? Could it happen that we would not be able to find such a polynomial? No, we can't, right? We already learned three different methods, the van der Mo matrix method, the Lagrange polynomial, and the Newton's form. So each of them would allow us to write out a polynomial of degree n for n plus 1 points, right? So there's no question about existence. So we say that part is clear by construction, since we can construct it. What remains to prove is that such polynomials are unique. So how would you show that there exists one and only such polynomials? What argument would you use? So we'll be using this um, rather simple argument to prove the uniqueness. So we assume that there are two polynomials that will do this job. And then in the end, we show that these two polynomials must be identical to each other, therefore uniqueness. Okay, so let's denote these two polynomials as P and Q. They are both polynomials of degree N, and they interpolate the data so that P at xi equals to yi, and Q at xi equals to yi, for i from 0, 1 to n, n plus 1 data point. And then now we construct a new function, let's call it g of x, which is simply P of x minus Q of x. So if P and Q are both polynomials of degree n, and g is just the distance between those two functions, so g will also be a polynomial of degree less than or equal to n. 
we are now interested in finding the zeros for this function g. So let's put in the point xi where xi is a one of the data point and find the value of g at those points. And we see this will be p at xi minus q at xi. And since both p and q interpolates the data, so they will both give me the value yi and minus yi. So this gives me zero. And this holds for i from 0, 1, all the way to n. So how many zeros do I find? We conclude now the function g has n plus 1 zeros. So what does it mean? Remember that g is a polynomial of degree n, and it has n plus 1 zeros. So using the fundamental theorem of algebra, we must have that g of x is identically zero. And then this implies px identically equal to q of x. So the polynomial is unique. Well, I hope you enjoyed this short video and see you next time.